You're watching Venture Forward, a video series about vehicle-supported adventure, backcountry exploration, and full-time mobile living. Join us as we discover scenic and interesting places both on and off the beaten path. It's late August 2022 and adventure is afoot in Quebec. I was about to say northern Quebec because it feels far north, especially coming from the States. But I've been driving northbound through the province for three, maybe four hours now, and I'm still firmly in southern Quebec. Before I delve too much into where I am and what I'm doing right now, I want to take a look back at the weekend. On Sunday, Shannon and I went on a sailing tour on the Cutter Owl through MainSchooners.com out of Camden, Maine. Aside from our very talented and friendly captain, we had the boat all to ourselves and it was amazing. It was just a breathtaking experience. I loved to sail and it looks something like this. All right, uh, would you like us anywhere in particular? Um, so you can step aboard right here uh -huh. across. I'm here to give you a hand and you can sit on any of the red cushions. That's Mount Batty. Oh, Definitely I should go about up that. there. Yeah. yeah. So that's a little tower. Where are you coming from? What do you think? It's lovely. And it, I just enjoy doing new things in general, so this is right up my alley. Yeah. What do you think? I do this once every blue moon. Every time that I'm aboard a sailboat, it's just like, yes, I can do this. The owl looks good for having been built in 1941. You can tell that a lot of work has been done over the years to maintain and modernize this vessel. I would love to have seen her new just to understand how much she's changed. day I parted ways with Shannon and I started traveling northwest through Maine in the Jeep toward Canada. For the next few weeks Shannon and I are dividing and conquering for work reasons. I'm venturing north into Quebec and Shannon's hanging out on coastal Maine in our Winnebago Revel. I expect we're eventually going to rendezvous probably somewhere around Michigan but we don't have the details of that worked out quite yet. By the time I got to western Maine near the Canadian border yesterday, it was pretty late in the day. So instead of crossing into Canada yesterday, I decided to spend one more night in the U.S. in Maine's backcountry before making my way into Canada. The western part of the state has a whole different vibe than the Maine coast, and it showcases natural splendor in an entirely different way.
I drove a little over three hours today from Rockland, Maine to the western border. And it was later in the day when I got here, so I decided it would be better to spend one more night in the U.S. And then tomorrow, sometime early, I'll cross into Canada. Western Maine is very wild and remote and consists of a vast expanse of logging roads. Unless it's otherwise posted, the general public is usually allowed to drive registered street vehicles on the logging roads. And there are even designated campsites like this one that are usually marked with some sort of sign. This is a great spot, several miles from pavement, right next to a very large pond and only a stone's throw from the Canadian border. It's a beautiful morning in western Maine. Coffee is made and I'm just hanging out by camp enjoying this very peaceful setting. Last night's campsite was just off to the side of a logging road and despite being on the road it was very quiet, there wasn't any traffic whatsoever, just to the sounds of wildlife. I've heard frogs, there are a lot of great blue herons on the lake, and I've been keeping my eyes open for moose, but I haven't encountered any yet. They are here because I'm deep in the heart of moose country. Right now I'm going to spend a little bit more time enjoying the solitude, and then I'm going to break camp and keep working my way north into Canada. Okay. When the logging road gets densely overgrown, that's a bad sign. I followed it a little bit further, and sure enough, there's a barrier of fallen trees and debris. I'm gonna have to backtrack. I spent all day driving northbound through Quebec and I hadn't had anything to eat. So for dinner I stopped at a microbrewery called Bercy. 
This was my first stop in Quebec, and it reminded me how good the food and drink scenes are here. My pulled pork sandwich was outstanding, and the salad was pretty good too. All right, now that you're all caught up, I've been driving all day northbound into Quebec. It's getting late in the day, I'm running low on daylight, so right now I've got Backroad Mapbooks Canada up on Gaia GPS, and I'm looking for backcountry routes to explore where I might be able to find a place to spend the night. I wasn't able to find a particularly attractive campsite. Uh, this is just a flat spot at the side of an old logging road. But it's very secluded and peaceful, so at least I have ample privacy just for a night of shut-eye. Of course, it's a rainy night and the bugs have been pretty bad. No seams, actually. Haven't had much trouble with mosquitoes, but there are a lot of gnats and a lot of no seams. I'm going to travel a little bit further north when it gets light out and try to find a more charming place to settle in for a few nights. I'm already far enough north that the vegetation is starting to change very dramatically. The ground is covered with moss and this white mossy lichen. It's very soft and it looks almost like cauliflower. And I'm not sure if this is a characteristic of taiga, but it's very pretty and very interesting. Like I said, it's a nice campsite, it's very secluded and very private, but the gnats are extremely bad. I still need to make my morning coffee, but not here. It's very buggy. So I'm going to head out and see what else we can find. On my way out, as I was exploring, I found a curious footpath that I followed into the woods. It was a short walk, and it led to a very cool-looking natural spring. Someone had run a pipe from the spring to an adjacent pool, and the path was well-trodden, so you could tell that people were coming here for water fairly often. I found this bridge to nowhere and I decided that it's as good a place as any to make my morning coffee. I'm not blocking any traffic because the road on the other side is densely overgrown, so I think that people stopped using this bridge for the most part a long time ago. Top surface is starting to rot, but it's got good bones. By the time that I found camp, I didn't waste any time setting up, and again, I was famished, so reheating leftover pizza was the first order of business. Now we're talking. In my search for a campsite today, I drove down a neglected logging road, about seven kilometers. And neglected roads usually dead end unremarkably. And that is what happened here. 
But at the very end of the road, there was this gravel clearing that overlooked some large ponds in this beautiful setting with great cell service to boot. So I decided this is the perfect place to settle in for a few nights. There are more of those lichens that I encountered this morning. There's a lot of wild berries. It's mostly coniferous and there's not much of a canopy anymore. The bugs aren't bad at the moment, but they were really bad when I first got here, which is why I deployed the screen room on my ARB awning. An old fire ring. I'm not the first to have camped here, apparently. Sort of good, in a way. <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like there's rain in the forecast, so I have to button things up. It's Thursday morning after a good night's sleep. I've got coffee going. It's a little bit chilly out and somewhat overcast. There's some blue sky over there. And I am getting ready to edit video in the Jeep. Oh. Pay attention, Chris. I am getting ready to edit video in the Jeep. It has been a long time since I've used RNG as a video studio. Fast forward about 36 hours, and I'm putting the finishing touches on this episode, V18E1, into the heart of Quebec. One thing that I'm extremely happy with is the high output USB outlet that I installed in the dashboard a couple months ago. This is a relatively new M1 MacBook Pro that I got last year, and this is the first time that I've ever tried to power it from the Jeep. Before this, the USB outlets in the Jeep did not have the output to provide power to the computer and also keep it charged. I don't know what made the most difference, the new computer or the new outlets, but I no longer need an inverter to use my computer in the Jeep. This has been running all day long on 12 volt, wired to the accessory battery and isolated from the starter battery, so I could run this into the ground and still be able to start the Jeep. And of course, a Sunflare 100 watt solar panel is also a huge help. It's keeping the car batteries completely topped off as I'm sitting here and editing video all day. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up, but just as a reminder, my detailed GPS data is available to Patreon subscribers, and I have points of interest available on the Thatch app for iOS and Android. After I'm done with this, I'm gonna break camp and continue north. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and thanks for following along. I'll see you next week.